Questions? Questions? Governor Pataki, if I could. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Greg Ball just raised the issue of that report from uh, the Inspector General, who we should point out is a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And it it would appear to be a ringing, endorse, a ringing indictment of what, of how the Senate Democrats have ruled the roost in Albany. I know that you're here to endorse the Republican, but I wonder how you feel this report will affect Republican and Democratic candidates throughout the state, and given the fact that there is a one-seat Democratic majority, could this flip the Senate to the Republican control? Uh, I think, Marsha, this report uh, is devastating uh, to the powers who control Albany today. Uh, for the last few years, we've had a one-party system. We've had Democrats in control of every statewide office, in control of the State Assembly, and in control of the State Senate. And you saw corruption, uh, not just the, the corruption as it's sometimes called by the press, but actual theft and possible criminal involvement by the highest leadership in the State Senate. I think it's going to affect every voter. I think every voter who knew that Albany was dysfunctional now understands that it's worse even than that and that we do need change. One party government in Albany doesn't work. Just think about it for one second. If this criminal leadership is allowed to continue in power after this election, they not only will win and keep in control of this election, they'll reapportion themselves into power for another decade. We cannot let that happen. And that's why it's not just Republicans and independents and conservatives. It's Democrats who have to step up and understand that this one-party system has not only not worked, it has been criminal. If I could just follow up, Governor. You know, Greg Ball called for uh, his opponent to return $313,000 in, in campaign cash that is tainted. But if you take a look at some of the uh, disputed elections around the state where mm -hmm. uh, Democrats are facing stiff competition from Republicans, you'll see that there's huge contributions of tainted money. For example, Brian Foley in, uh, in um, Long Island, Long Island yeah. got uh, $39,000 in tainted cash. Yeah. Um, uh, Daryl Albertine got almost $500,000 in campaign cash. Susie Oppenheimer, $100,000 in campaign cash. And the list goes on and on and on. Do you think that these everybody should return the cash? Absolutely. You know, certainly uh, when you're looking at these numbers, hundreds of thousands of dollars in tainted campaign contributions to Democratic incumbent state senators, every one of them should give it back. And if they don't give it back, they are simply being a part of continuing uh, what is not just uh, something that is dysfunctional, but is something that is really stealing from the future of this state. And I couldn't agree more with Greg Ball that his opponent, if he has received over $300,000 from the leadership of that Senate committee that has been proven now by a Democratic Inspector General to have been engaged in one of the worst corrupt and criminal activities this state has ever seen, he has to give that money back or he certainly loses, uh, in my view, any ability to serve the people of this district and this state appropriately. <laughs> And if I, if I can just follow up on one thing, yeah. those aren't only the words. Those aren't only the words of Greg Ball and uh, Governor Pataki. Th those are the words of their own Democratic candidate for Attorney General, uh, State Senator Schneiderman, who returned all those dollars, uh, plus a host of other Democratic candidates that have set the pace and are doing the right thing. They're stepping up to the plate on integrity. So it's not only uh, us that are saying that, but their own party. But in addition to the fact that you're calling for uh, your opponent to return the cash. I mean, you know, being part of, do you think it's important, or how do you feel the voters should feel about the fact that he would give, help to give them a Democratic majority and continue in power these people who are excoriated in that report and who have been forwarded to the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District, the Manhattan District Attorney, and the Legislative Ethics Committee for possible prosecution, that he would be joining with those people? You know, th there, there is no doubt that if we send uh, tax like Mike, my opponent, to the New York State Senate and allow uh, the Democratic majority to maintain that majority, we will never repeal the MTA payroll tax, we will never cap property taxes, we will never have comprehensive school tax reform, and we will never clean up the wasteland that has become Albany because this man has accepted hundreds of thousands of dollars, $313,000 in tainted campaign contributions. I've raised my money, 2,000 donors, 
dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars at a time. When I'm seated in the chamber of the New York State Senate, I will look towards the grassroots, look towards my supporters, the seniors, the taxpayers who have supported me for the past four years. And when a tough vote comes up, he's going to look to those hundred thousand dollar tainted transfers and say, you know what? I've got to nod in my head and jump through hoops for Malcolm Smith and Sampson, just like he jumped through hoops for Andy Spano as his toy poodle. So do you think that do you think that the state senate? It can be cleaned up. <laughs> uh, otherwise, uh, Marshall, we might as well pick a state. I personally like Texas. Maybe you want Colorado, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> We've either got to get the state Senate back and get this state back in track and put checks and balances in state government because reforms I talk about, capping property taxes, freezing school tax for seniors, eliminating the unfunded mandates, putting real teeth in the ethics law to take these criminal legislators and throw them out on their ear. Those reforms weren't only needed yesterday, they were needed 10 years ago, and it's time to get the job done. Governor, the Mr. Wall has repeatedly said that the system at Albany is to solve the household with work. That includes Republicans and mm -hmm. Democrats. That's right. Uh, this, this, the, this particular group of Democrats uh, being uh, uh, called to task by the, uh, the Inspector uh -huh. General's office. What needs to be done to make sure that the Republicans don't get into the same situation? Well, when I was in the Republican State Senate, uh, when we were in the majority, I was kind of an outcast. Uh, and it wasn't corruption like you see now, and it wasn't dysfunction like you see now. Then it was all about staying in office. Uh, and that is wrong. And, and too often, people, once they get elected, just uh, uh, go along with the powers to stay in office. But there's a big difference between that and the all-out corruption that we have just seen in the Inspector General's report. This is in all likelihood criminal activity and the larger, one of the largest contracts this state has ever uh, let out. Uh, this is beyond any political give and take. This is about trying to retain your, your position uh, in office. This is about criminal corruption and it shows that uh, the leadership of the Democratic State Senate uh, has put the interest of the people in the distant background and not only are concerned about retaining power, but they have been corrupt in the way in which they're trying to do that. And they have forfeited their right to serve the people of this state. How do you tell the people then to, to say, okay, this, this is the Democrats. Uh, Republicans two years from now and uh, next year could wind up in the same situation with the same type of uh, people being the same type of group. Well, I think we're going to have checks and balances because you'll have uh, both parties represented in the leadership in Albany. You don't have that now. You have a one-party government. Every single statewide elected official is a Democrat. The governor is a Democrat. The state assembly is controlled by the Democrats. The state senate is controlled by the Democrats. Now, as I said, this shouldn't be troubling not just to Republicans or to conservatives and independents. This should be troubling to Democrats because they have been let down by people from their own party in this corruption, in this dysfunction, and failing to run this state with the integrity and with the right policies that they and every New Yorker needs. And you, you know, you got to remember, this is the group, they had 32 different budgets. They acted like third graders. They shut out the lights when they disagreed with each other. They uh, refused to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. They couldn't get a budget done forever. Now we know why they couldn't get a budget done. They were shutting off the lights. They were too busy with a multi-billion dollar pay-to-play scheme. I mean, that's got to take a little bit of work, burn the midnight oil, to give out a 30-year contract and then throw victory parties on the deathbed of taxpayers that are leaving this state in droves. So, you know, you got to think about who you're talking about here. These, uh, these uh, state senators and the Democratic majority who are part of that New York City uh, tax and spend crew have proven themselves absolutely incapable of leading this state in any way. And you can say whatever you want about the Republican majority in the past, they worked as a team and they moved forward as a team. And I can tell you with my independent voice in that conference, we will make damn sure that we root out the corruption at all levels and on both sides of the aisle. <laughs> Governor, when, yes. when you look back, you were a young man not too many years ago starting out like that. What's the message you have to Greg Wall? Just uh, stick to your guns. Uh, this is a man who, who when he got elected uh, as an outsider, didn't try to uh, become uh, beloved by the leadership. He wanted to do what was right for the people that uh, sent him to Albany. Uh, and I think if he just continues to, to put the interest of the people first uh, and not put his own political career or his particular party ahead of the interest of the people, uh, as he has done in the past, then Greg Ball will be a, a not just a, a, a very excellent state senator, he'll be a leader in Albany, and that's what we need. A governor yeah. someday? Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> <not only not>. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of off question. Do you think that this report will have any spillover effect 
in the attorney general's race? Well, I think it certainly <laughs> certainly should because uh, uh, the, the the Senate uh, Democratic leadership uh, clearly has been shown to be not just dysfunctional but corrupt. Uh, and Eric Snyderman, while he's giving the funds back, uh, has a lot of explaining to to do as to why he was uh, uh, not uh, aware of this and why he didn't uh, speak out about this. Yes. What is your opinion on the smear campaign that uh, Mr. Ball's uh, adversary has waged against him? You know, can I can I just say that uh, uh, when I look at uh, the campaigns, uh, not just this campaign, the, but the campaigns around the state and around the country, there are important issues that affect every single person in this state and every single person in this country. And when it comes down to personal attacks, I am quick to condemn them, whether it's uh, my own party's candidate for governor, who I think was uh, wrong and and some of the comments he made, or the uh, the attacks that are being made against Greg Ball. Uh, this should be about who's going to represent the people and who's going to help solve the very real problems this state has. We spend way too much, we tax way too much, we drive jobs and opportunity out of this state. We have to change that, and that's what his opponent should be talking about, and I think it's simply because uh, he's on the wrong side of most of these issues, that he's trying to make it a personal campaign instead of about the future of this district and this state. Right. Thank you. Good cover. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank right. you, everybody. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Just win. <laughs>